with you that have been in my heart um, for the past few days. You know, I've had a heavy heart <coughs> uh, the last couple of days because, as uh, I told you on, on Sunday, I moved out of my house and then uh, I gave my, my wife the key that I had because she loves hers, so uh, go figure. Anyway, <clears throat> I've been thinking about that, you know, for the past few days, and, and yesterday was officially the first day that I drove to and from work straight to my new uh, place where, where I'm living right now. You know, it's, it's, it's very hard, and uh, I like to be very transparent with you on my sharing the things that I'm, that I'm going through. Uh, and sometimes I do it because I want you to understand where I'm coming from when I share some of these things. Uh, but then yesterday, <coughs> I believe that the Lord pointed me to a particular scripture because he wanted me to be reassured of his word. I'm, I'm, I'm at work and I'm just checking the website for the Broadway musical Cinderella. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> and because uh, they're coming to the Civic Center in July. So I think I might go see that. Anyway, uh, I'm going through the list of the cast members and the lady that plays the main character. I don't remember uh, the name of the character because I don't think I've ever seen the movie. Uh, she has a little. Uh, mini biography, things that she's done and whatnot, and then she ends whatever she wrote with the scripture. And I thought, man, this is interesting. She didn't actually quote the scripture, she just put the book, the chapter, and the verses. And this is what she had. For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant you to be strengthened with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think according to the power at work within us. I truly believe that the Lord wanted me to be reminded of that word, mm -hmm. which is funny because I have it highlighted here in my, in my Bible as one of my uh, favorite scriptures. And, you know, today I got the call from call from the lawyer saying that uh, all the paperwork has been processed in the court and then the ball is rolling now for whatever's going to happen. But I do know this. Every day that passes, I understand more what the love of God is towards us, towards other people, uh, how we can try to love others as much as possible the way he loves us. Mm -hmm. We're never going to be able to do it because we have limitations of being humans. But it's very encouraging for me mm -hmm. that all the, the ways that he looks for to continue to speak to me mm -hmm. about how much he loves me, how much he loves us. <clears throat> the promises that he has made for everybody that are in the Bible, the ones that he's made to us individually, when we're talking to him in, in, in the path that we walk with him, the relationship with, we have with him, that is what keeps me going. Mm -hmm. What keeps me from not, you know, falling down or crumbling or, or, cause it's not easy going through this. And I, as I was driving uh, home today, 
I was thinking about that, and I was thinking, God, if it wasn't for you, I don't know how I would have gone through this. Because, I don't know, I probably would have off myself or something. I don't know. But, you know, just keep reminding yourselves and keep turning to him because he's there even if we sometimes don't feel him. I know that uh, he's taking care of us and, and, and all of you, and I'm so glad that I have you in my life because uh, right now I am literally alone in terms of blood relatives, but I do have this family Amen. that I know is, is with me and, and supports me in everything that I do. So Amen. Amen. Thank you for that. Amen. Any prayer requests or testimonies? That you would like to share? I don't know how many jokes that you guys can. Thank you for bringing us together into your presence. We thank you, Lord, for the revelation that you give us through your word. For always finding a way, Lord, to talk to us. Whether 
first, the one that first, something that we see somewhere, in the situation, whatever it is, Father, you always find a way to talk to us, to remind us of your word, the things that you have said to us that are coming to pass in our lives, to remind ourselves to trust in you, to focus ourselves in you, to continue looking up to you. And just praise you and thank you for everything that you have done, for everything that you are doing, and everything that you will continue to do. Your holy And thank you, Father, for all the miracles that you have done. Thank you for the healing, for the power, for the prosperity, for the provision. And thank you for turning us into new creatures. Thank you for transforming our lives, for the love that you have for us. Sometimes I, uh, let me go back a little. I believe and I trust the Lord and I believe His Word and, and the things that He's done and, and what He's doing right now. Uh, I remember talking to someone one day, and that person said, You know, there was a time that I said, God, show me something that I can physically see so I can know, you know, of your miracles and, and all this stuff. And sometimes I catch myself just. Asking him, just show me something. Then I, I, I remind myself, I don't need to see anything because I already know just by looking at myself in the mirror and, and how different I am from where I was two years ago. Amen. That's just all the proof I need. Hey, we don't have any announcements, so let's speak the word. Will you not Amen. revive us again? That your people may rejoice in you. Hallelujah. I am a believer, and these signs do follow me. In the name of Jesus, I cast out demons, I speak with new tongues, I lay hands on the sick, and they do recover. Hallelujah. Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law. Therefore, I forbid any sickness or disease to come upon this body. Every disease, germ, and every virus that touches this body dies instantly in the name of Jesus. Every organ and every tissue of this body functions to the perfection.
open, Lord.
Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Just think of what was said uh, Sunday about the testings and the, the purifying of us and how it's, it's really about our minds and the way that we perceive the Lord. And every test is a test of faith. And I heard someone say, I don't know if it was today or yesterday, but uh, it's so true that our faith is not in what we think God's going to do or not going to do. Our faith is in his grace, which is what Sally's saying. It's already in us. His grace has already provided everything. So it's a question of us believing in that grace, in his goodness, in his favor for every situation, for every circumstance. It isn't us trying to be good enough to get something from God. It's about us believing in His goodness that releases everything into this realm. It's already done in the Spirit. It's in our spirit because we are one with Him. But for manifestation, we simply have to... This is why we go through situations and trials and the testings as we refer to them. But it's because in this world we have tribulation. In this world there are tests. In this world there's trials. But it's just a question of us believing in his grace for whatever the situation might be, for whatever the circumstance might be. It's just another way of, of him saying, I am. Yes. In other words, I am whatever the need might be at any given time. He could, yes. His answer might be healing for one person. It might be deliverance for another. It might be a financial breakthrough. It might be a, a just a, a, a relational battle. It can be all of these things and any number of others all at the same time. Yes. And God can be every one of those things to yes. each one of us. And sometimes it's multiple stuff that we're going through. But he is whatever the need is. He's the source for every situation and every circumstance. And he never runs dry. He's never... Uh, you know, it's never like a burden on him to, like, you know, heaven is going to be short uh, this week because, you know, we've had a big demand on heaven. There's an abundance of his grace. It never runs out. It never is diminished or depleted. It's always excessive, just like God's love. Amen. Hallelujah. The test is that we believe in that grace, that we believe that he is everything that he says he is and that he'll do all that he has said. And he says, I can do exceeding abundantly above all that you can ask or think. Take, think your biggest dream, your greatest desire, and magnify that by a few thousand times, and it's still nothing compared to what God wants to do for each one of us. Praise the Lord. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap tonight. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God bless y'all. Thank you again, worship team, as always. Fantastic. Whether you have four minutes to rehearse or 40. You always pull it off here by the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. It's the anointing that makes the difference, right? Praise the Lord. That's exactly right, Roberto. Praise the Lord. Thank the Lord. We're going to get right to the Word of God tonight. I know everybody has early morning stuff tomorrow. You've got to get up good work and all that. So we'll try to be obedient to the Lord and and expedient at the same time, praise the Lord. The old. I'm going to go to uh, Mark chapter 4, and we'll read verses 35 uh, through 41. And I appreciate the testimonies this evening because they really are what the Lord had uh, has been dealing with me about. And... Uh, Sometimes, you know, we, we forget we live in a real world, even though we're not of this world, we still are in it. And uh, just crazy stuff happens all the time, things that are really not explainable, and yet we know that we have the victory, regardless of what it looks like at any given moment. And that's the key to everything, and it is, again, it's, it's, it's looking and understanding that every one of these situations is a purification process. It purifies our mind. It, it, it does cleanse us of bad thinking, which is what the scripture is talking about when it says renew your mind yes. uh, 
to the Word of God or by the Word of God. Well, Jesus is the Word. So everything in this Bible is pointing to him. It's, it's, it's a reference to him. It's an example of him, a metaphor for him. It's, it's just, that's all it is everywhere that you look. And it, it amazes me how that so many times we've read scriptures and overlooked the real intent, the deeper, I guess, uh, purpose of what the Holy Spirit's trying to say through these various writers. And it's all, it always comes back to the same thing. It's always about Jesus and about being able to trust him, being able to believe that no matter what it is you're going through, he's going to see you through it and he's going to give you the victory. But the enemy's job is to get us focused in this realm, you know, get us focused on people and things and situations and circumstances rather than on him. Uh, it's like what Tim said. Yet there, we all have problems, and our problems vary from time to time in the scope, you know. But God is always greater, and that's what we always have to do is instead of measuring the problem to us, we measure it to God. It may be overwhelming to us, but it's not a big deal to God. That's right. And so we have to stay focused on that. Praise the Lord. So let's, let's go to Mark, and, and we'll begin uh, chapter 4, beginning at verse 35, and we'll read right through uh, verse 41. And the same day when the even was come, he saith unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they wake him, and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind, and said unto the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? So Jesus wakes up, and uh, two amazing things happen. First of all, his words themselves. Simply a command. You know, it, he didn't roll up his sleeves. You know, he didn't take off his shirt, he didn't, uh, you know, loosen his tie, he didn't brace himself, you know, for this great challenge, he didn't raise a wand or his scepter or a sword or anything else, he just said, quiet, be still. Yeah. I mean, it's like the way we would talk to an unruly kid, right, acting up and quiet, be still. But unlike most of the children and grandchildren that we all experience. <laughs> this storm acted like a compliant child. It just sat down and shut up. Yeah. I mean, it just, everything became calm. Everything was quiet. And uh, it was just uh, unbelievable. Every, the winds died. The water instantly went dead calm. Now, the second thing is, remember when Jesus was with the Pharisees on the Sabbath? We talked about here a few weeks ago whenever it was. And he said, I'm not just uh, someone who can teach you to take rest or how to get rest. Mm -hmm. But he said, I am rest itself. Mm -hmm. And what he's saying in this, he's demonstrating he's not just someone with power, but he is power exactly. itself. He is the reality of power. He is the essence of of power. He is the source of all power. Anything that has power in this world got it somehow from him. Mm -hmm. You know, as a, as a lend lease thing. You know, he has it all. So, what, what does that mean to us? Well, basically human beings have two options. You can argue this world is just the result of some humongous monumental storm and, and you're here by accident the result of just blind, violent forces of nature, like the Big Bang, <laughs> pop, it went, and here we are, you know, a few million years later. And when you die, you just turn to dust, and that's the end of it. Nobody knows, nobody remembers, and eventually it's all forgotten, and it's over with. Or, if Jesus is who he says he is, 
if he's Lord of the storm, then no matter what shape the world is in or what shape your life might be in, Jesus provides all of the healing, all of the rest, all of the power that you're ever going to need or could even want. Amen. That is basically the two choices that man has. Right. Now, let's go to Mark again, chapter 4. This time we'll look again at verses 38 through 41. He was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow, and they wake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? Now, normally we would read that and we'd say, uh, Jesus said, how come you don't have any faith? Because their faith was that somehow he would do something for them that he wasn't doing. In other words, he wasn't doing what they thought he should be doing when they wanted him to do it. Mm -hmm. And the truth is, they only had to have faith in his grace, in his promise, in his, he is grace. He, all the promises, Sally said, in him are yea and in Christ, amen. There are, all, the, all those promises are not, in, they're not based on us. They're not based on what we do. They're based in him, in Christ, and Christ is in us. Therefore, we don't have to have faith in, we don't have to worry, in other words, when there's a storm. And that's, that's the point of what's going on here in this or this dialogue that's taken place in verses 38 through 41. Because before Jesus calms the storm, they're afraid. And what's weird is that after he calms the storm, they're terrified. I mean, this is serious business, obviously, for these guys. But, but why? I mean, if they were scared spitless, in the midst of the storm, yeah. why then after the storm are they, are they terrified? Yeah. Well, before Jesus woke, the boat was nearly swamped. It says it was full. It didn't mean full of people. It was full of water. The water was overwhelming the boat. And if you've ever been in a, in a small boat or any boat that's full of water, you know it ain't going to float very long. And if you're in the middle of a storm, that's bad. It's bad any time, but especially if you're away from the shore and you're out in the middle of this storm, so the boat was nearly, it was almost full of water, and the disciples couldn't bail out the water fast enough. They're freaking out, and they were sure they were going to die. Yeah. They, they were convinced, and they're saying, don't you care that we're going to drown? All of us are trying to live by faith, and all of us that do live by faith or try to live by faith feel this way at times. There are, there are moments, there are places in our lives where we feel like we're just doing everything we can. We're bailing as fast and we're thinking, my God, he, he's got to see this chaos, this mess, this, I'm going under. And don't you care? Mm. Everything's going wrong. And God seems to be asleep. And we're thinking, if you loved us, you wouldn't let us go through this. And Jesus calmed the storm, and he responds to him. And did he say, I understand how you feel? Or I get it, I, you know, I sympathize with your emotions here. No, look at Mark chapter 4, verse 40. And he said unto them, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? Our faith is in him. They were fearful because their faith in him. They didn't trust him. It wasn't how big the storm was, because that, that's his point. doesn't matter what you're going through. This is about faith in my goodness, in my promises, in my love for you, in my commitment to you. Not in how good you are. How long you can bite the bullet and grit your teeth and just press on. 
Can you imagine what the disciples must have been thinking? What do you mean? We were afraid we're going to drown. I mean, isn't that? Surely you knew that. You understand the, the kind of terror we were going through? The kind of fear and anxiety and, and stress we were under? We were afraid you didn't love us. And you were going to let us drown. Because if you loved us, you wouldn't let this happen to us. You wouldn't have let that thing take place. Right? But behind Jesus' question here, there is a thought. And, and this is the thought that Jesus is having. And what he's saying is basically your premise is wrong. You should have known better. How long have I been with you, he said. You know? Have I, have I demanded anything of you other than just follow me? Your premise is wrong because storms happen. And you had absolutely no reason to panic. Now, if they had any reason to panic in the storm, they sure didn't have any reason to be afraid after the storm had been calmed. Mm -hmm. Verse 41. And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, what manner of man is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? Why then are they more terrified in the calm than they were in the storm? <laughs> because Jesus was as unmanageable as the storm itself. Mm, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and the truth is, that's where our fear comes in. Because we've been taught through religion that we can manipulate God by just doing a bunch of good stuff, by being better, by doing this and doing that, and we can make God jump through the hoops when all God wants us to do is trust him because he's already provided. He just wants you to know how much he loves you so that you don't have to be afraid, no matter what the storm looks like, no matter how bad it is, and even if it doesn't look like he's responding, even if it seems like he's sound asleep. Right. We've kind of twisted things. I don't mean we do it with a, you know evil intent, but it's the misunderstanding of God. If we understood how much God loves us, we'd never question. We, we would trust. We would just know this is just a storm. It'll pass. God will calm it. God will take care of it. He's not forgotten us. Does that mean we don't pray? No. But I'm just saying we pray not out of fear. But as it was already said tonight, we should just be praising him in the storm for what he's already done. That shows faith. That's the kind of faith that he's looking for. Not faith that I can get enough faith to get God to do something, but just simply trusting that he loves me enough. He's not going to let anything evil happen. Amen. He's going to take care of me. Even though evil stuff happens, he's going to see me through it. Amen. He's going to be with me. He's not going to forsake me. He's not going to forget about me. Amen? Amen? The storm had unimaginable power. Anybody that's been in a tornado, I've been in a couple of them. I was one in Ankeny years ago when I was going to DMAC, and it blew the one door off the apartment complex, or apartment house I was living in, and sucked the other one in. It sucked one inside and blew the other one out and the whole corner of the building off. And uh, one couple was killed just a few blocks from where I lived at the time, and that whole section of Ankeny there off of uh, Highway 69, which is Ankeny Boulevard, uh, just north of DMAC was just devastating. I mean, it was just wiped out. It was just nothing but twigs and sticks from the houses. It just looked like a bombs had gone off there. And uh, so I've seen, you know, I've seen some storms, and, and you know, it's a helpless feeling. There's nothing you can do. I mean, it's picking up these huge dumpsters, and they're just floating around like the Wizard of Oz out there, you know, <laughs> and your ears are popping, and, you know, it's just it's, it's bizarre. But people that lived through hurricanes, and uh, we left, we fled <laughs> southeast Texas in the middle of one. 
uh, when we lived down there and went up, to, I don't even remember how far north we went, but we went far enough to where the hurricane wasn't a threat because we'd seen uh, the damage that was still left over from a storm that had gone through two years before when, we first, when I first moved to Houston before Sally came down. That whole area where I was staying before we got our own place was still a mess. They were still cleaning up two years later. So they're, they're, storms are, are powerful and they have immense power and they're not controllable. You can get forewarned, but you can't do much about it. I mean, you can't do about much about the storm other than take cover, you know, try to get protected. So storms are powerful. And these guys realize that they're in the middle of one and they couldn't control it. But Jesus had infinitely more power, right? And so apparently they understood that they had even less control over him. If they couldn't control the storm that had a lot of power, they certainly weren't going to be able to control this guy who is able to control the storm. Obviously having greater power. So there's a huge difference, though, between a storm and Jesus. The storm doesn't love you. The storm's indifferent about you. But Jesus loves you, and that's what they didn't connect the two. Nature, I don't want to be negative here, but, but nature is going to wear you down and destroy you one way or another. If you live long enough, eventually your body will give out and you'll die. I believe for us that's going to be about 120. Amen. Praise the Lord. But I'm just being honest here. Natural life, you start dying as soon as you're born. And nature doesn't let up. And it throws us curveballs along the way and tries to speed up the process and quicken it and, and shorten our life and, and all of the things that it does. So if it doesn't happen that way, then there's disasters to deal with. Wars, natural disasters, accidents. Feeling the lift here? Praise the Lord. Everybody getting really built up and excited. But nature is violent. And it's overwhelming. It's unmanageable power. Just turn on the TV and all you see is how to, if you can't get younger, look younger. You know, iron out the wrinkles, wipe them off with a cream, uh, you know, get a lift, get a bob, get a something, get anything. And then there's multiple kinds of vitamins that will extend your life and this pill, take that pill. Uh, just take this pill. You don't have to change anything else. Get this machine. Do this. And some of them, you, that you look at them, you go, my God, you know, it's insane. Thousands, millions of dollars sure. people spend to try to beat the system, the natural system. Amen? But it's violent. Nature is violent. It's overwhelming. It's unmanageable power. And it gets us sooner or later say, well, that's true. But if I go to Jesus, he's not under my control either. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And we say that because things happen that we don't understand. I know it's happened to me. Things don't always go according to my plans or in the ways that make sense to me in the moment, right. in the storm. But his power is unbounded yeah. and so is his wisdom and so is his love mm -hmm. so what looks like God's asleep or doesn't care doesn't mean God's not doing something right. Right. brother Tim said it tonight we are looking at the situation and because we don't see immediate things happening Roberto was talking about the same thing we have a tendency in the natural to think that he doesn't care he doesn't He's asleep, he's not doing anything, he's stagnant, he's static, he's something else. But no, he's moving. We're just trying to get him to show us what it is he's doing. Right. We want to know. We, we, we want it to make sense to us right in the now. 
Praise the Lord. Nature is indifferent to you. Jesus loves you. Jesus cares. Jesus is full of untamable love for you. You can't diminish his love. You can't do anything to tame that love, to keep that love suppressed or drawn back. You know, somehow, you know, we always love our children, but there are times we're not really expressing love. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We kind of, they irritate you, they make you really angry, and they just do, and people in general, I'm not, not just our children, but I'm using that as a type for God. And, and so it's not that we don't, we stop loving them, we just don't hug them real tight and give them a big kiss. We kind of, you know, let them know that we're not real pleased with that behavior. And, but see, God never does that. He never backs away from us. He, he, his love is untamable. You can't, you can't get him to not express it, to not share it. For God so loved that he gave. Praise the Lord. Remember the story about Jonah? In Jonah chapter uh, 1, and we don't need to go there and read it because it, it, it's verses 4 through 16, and I want to I get done here quickly for you guys. But most of you all are familiar with the storm. Well, Mark deliberately laid out his account of this situation with Jesus and his disciples. It was a real story. It was a real historic event. But he lays it out with language that really, if you go back and read that Noah's, or excuse me, uh, Jonah's uh, story, there's a parallel to that account of Jonah. Hmm. Both Jesus and Jonah were in a boat. Yeah. Both boats are overtaken by a storm. Uh-huh. Both Jesus and Jonah are asleep. Mm-hmm. Both stories, the sailors wake up and freak out. They say, we're going to die in both stories. In both cases, there's a miraculous intervention, and the sea is calmed. In both stories, the sailors became more terrified after the storm than during the storm. Look at, let's just look at this one verse, Jonah uh, chapter 1, verse 12. And he said unto them, Take me up and cast me forth into the sea, so shall the sea be calm unto you. For I know that for my sake this great tempest is upon you. And so they threw him into the sea. Now that doesn't happen in Mark, or does it? In Matthew, look at this in Matthew chapter 12, verse 41. He says, the men of Nineveh, which is where Jonah was supposed to be going when he took off in the boat, shall rise in judgment with this generation and shall condemn it because they repented at the preaching of Jonah. And behold, a greater than Jonah is here. Mm. Jesus immediately identifies and Mark remembers that. And so he parallels this with that story. Because Jesus is the true Jonah. Yeah. Yes. And the day comes if we keep our focus on him, not on the, not on the Jonas, but on, the, on the, what Jonah points us to, uh-huh. the Jesus, uh-huh. where our storms are calmed, mm-hmm. where the waves that seem to destroy us are diminished. where he breaks brokenness. He destroys destruction. He kills death. Jesus was thrown into the only storm that can actually sink us. Mm -hmm. Storm of eternal justice. Our debt for our wrongdoing. That storm wasn't calmed until it swept him away. Mm -hmm. If you can ever get an image of Jesus 
hanging on that cross and bowing his head to that storm, the ultimate storm. And you'll never say, God, don't you care? Whenever we're in the storm, that should be our focus. And if you know he didn't abandon you in that ultimate storm, why would you believe that he'd abandon you in the much smaller storms that we're experiencing here and now? This is where faith can grow. Just let it penetrate to the very core, the very center of your being. And you'll know that he loves you. You'll know he cares. And you'll have the power to handle anything life throws at you with confidence, Mm -hmm. with courage, and with poise. Because he said, I love you. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. No storm compares to the storm that he was willing to be cast into so that we could escape and be delivered. And you say, praise the Lord. Lord. Amen. He's always good. He's always on our side. He's always alert and ready to deliver us from all evil. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless all of you for being here tonight. Go in confidence and know that whatever you're facing, whatever may come up in the future, he's not going to leave you. He's wide awake. He's in charge. He's in control. Just stay confident in him and know that he will deliver in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. You're dismissed in Jesus' mighty name. Praise the Lord.